Hi everyone, today I'm here to talk about The Shining by Stephen King. And this is kind of going to be an all-encompassing Shining tour. So this is going to be about the book. It's going to be about the Stanley Kubrick movie. It is going to be about the hotel that The Shining was based on. And it's also going to be about the TV series that was filmed in that hotel. So it's going to be about all four of these and my thoughts about all of them. I actually read The Shining back in June, so it's been a while, but I thought I would save this until Halloween. And there is another reason why this one is coming way later than June, and we are going to get to that in the review. But first, we are going to start with The Shining book. So this was obviously written by Stephen King, as I said at the beginning. I don't have my copy with me right now. But I actually have read The Shining before. I think it was back in 2015 or 2016, maybe even 2017. But the first time I read it, totally freaking out. Like it was scary. It was well written. I totally enjoyed it. And it obviously made an impact on me because I decided to read it again. And I usually don't read books again unless I actually thought they were really good. <laughs> so Obviously, I'm suggesting the book already by saying it was that good that I would reread it. And I feel like, especially with horror films or horror books, the second time you read them, they're obviously not as scary because you know everything that's going to happen. That being said, what I really noticed this time reading The Shining Through was how Stephen King is really good at making his characters speak differently. Like Dick Halloran talks way different than the summertime caretaker and he speaks way different than Danny and that makes it easier to tell characters apart and also just make them their own person and as a writer myself I like to write novels and short stories that's definitely something I could work on because all my characters just talk the same <laughs> like they might have random little nuances like some of them never use contractions or anything like that but not in the way that Stephen King did it. That is literally what I noticed the most was how well he's um, he can write different people's speech patterns to make them their own specific person instead of just blending in with all the other characters in the novel. Um, so I still really enjoyed it the second time through. I realized that to me the second time through it took a while to get to things like Jack Torrance I felt like it took him forever to go crazy and I just kept thinking when does he go crazy like when does he start chasing them around like when does he really go absolutely like maniac Jack Torrance because I'd already read the book once <laughs> so I felt like I was just waiting for that to happen and so the novel was a bit slower and seemed kind of slow overall the second time I read it through. And that like, once again, that could just be because I have already read it. So I know what's going to happen. But maybe it is even so for first time readers, I remember absolutely devouring it the first time I read it, and loving it. So I totally still suggest the book. I have not read that many Stephen King books. But I think The Shining is one of his best of the ones that I have read. I would definitely suggest it. So that was The Shining book. We are going to now move on to The Shining movie by Stanley Kubrick. Now, when this movie came out, there was a lot of flack for changing a lot of things from the book, mostly the character of Jack Torrance. So Jack Nicholson plays Jack Torrance in the Stanley Kubrick Shining version. And he is already a bit of an a-hole like at the beginning of the movie, not a bit, like, let's just be honest, he is already a rude, mean person towards the beginning of the movie. And he is kind of already crazy, in my opinion, in the movie before he even gets to the hotel. And a lot of people didn't like that because they thought that like in the book, he's this father who has his faults, he is an alcoholic, he has done some bad things but he is trying to be a better family man. And that didn't come across in the Stanley Kubrick Shining film, which I agree with, but also having recently watched the Shining film and read the book like really closely within one another, 
I thought that Jack Torrance in the book was also an a-hole. Like, yes, I get that he's an alcoholic, he's trying to recover from that, but I thought he was rude to Wendy basically the entire novel. There are some parts where he's kind of nice to her, but I honestly thought he was an a-hole in the novel. And so having read that and seen The Shining movie, I actually kind of get why Jack Nicholson portrayed Jack Torrance as crazy before he even got to the hotel because I actually thought he kind of was in the book. Like I did not like Jack Torrance in the book. And I know that Stephen King has a really big beef with The Shining film and I've heard that Jack Torrance was kind of based on himself as a struggling writer with alcoholism. And so I could understand why seeing Jack Nicholson portraying him as an already crazy like wah man in the film would upset Stephen King because that is kind of a reflection of himself. Whether or not that's true, like I haven't researched that. This is just things I've heard other people say about the Shining movie and the Shining book is that Jack Torrance was kind of based on Stephen King himself. And so he was really upset with that portrayal of the reflection of himself in the Stanley Kubrick movie. That being said, I've never met Stephen King. I don't know if he was an a-hole or if he was just a struggling writer during this period in his life. But like I said, in the book, I thought Jack was just rude to Wendy, rude to Danny. He was nicer to Danny, I thought, than to Wendy. I just thought he mistreated his wife so much. If I was her, I would have left him. So I understood why Jack Nicholson portrayed him as like nutso in the movie from the beginning. Once again, there's a lot of changes from the movie to the, or from the book to the movie, because the book came first. <laughs> but I actually really like Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. I wouldn't suggest watching it a lot. I've seen it twice and the first time it freaked me out. I remember sitting in my college dorm and with my roommates and just like huddled on the couch with like a pillow, like literally like clutching to my chest, like watching the movie and wondering what the hell was going to happen. And so it is a really good horror movie and they did the emotions really well. And I thought all of the actors did a fantastic job. Shelley Duvall, who plays Wendy in the movie, for some reason got a lot of flack and I don't know why, like I thought she played a fantastic Wendy, especially when Jack is freaking out and her having to deal with Stanley Kubrick, which is a completely different like topic, I don't need to talk about how The Shining was made or anything, but just her having to deal with him as a director, like I think she deserves applause for her portrayal of Wendy in The Shining by Stanley Kubrick. So I also suggest the movie. It is very different from the book. It does change a lot of things, but it was still a really good horror film that plays with emotions and it was beautifully filmed, really nicely done. So I definitely suggest both book and movie. So now we are going to move on to the hotel that The Shining was based on, which is the Stanley Hotel in Estes Park, Colorado. And by the way, I don't think I said this at the beginning, but this is gonna be a way longer video <laughs> because it is the all-encompassing Shining tour. Anyways, back to the hotel. So the reason I decided to reread The Shining was actually because I was going to see the Stanley Hotel. I decided to go to Estes Park and Rocky Mountain National Park, and I was gonna camp in Rocky Mountain National Park, and I was like, hey, camping is a great time to read horror stories, right? So I brought The Shining with me, started reading it before I left, was reading it while I was there, and also saw the hotel that Stephen King stayed at that The Shining is apparently based off of. So Stephen King was in this hotel in Estes Park back in the day in the 70s, and it was pretty run down at that point in time, and it was not open year round, and he basically got there the last day that they were open for the summer season. Even though I believe he was there late September, don't quote me on that. But it was basically him and his wife in the hotel, and then you know, all the workers there that were closing everything up and that was it. So he basically got to wander around this hotel all by himself and famously 
went to sleep at night, had this dream of his son running away from something really scary and calling for him. And when he woke up, he basically made up the whole plot of The Shining from that. So it was really cool to go to the hotel. It was made by the Stanleys. That's why it's called the Stanley Hotel. Um, and it's just a really interesting piece of history as well because there were two Stanley brothers, F.E. Stanley and F.O. Stanley, I believe were their initials. They were twins, so it's a bit confusing, but it's really interesting because they made their fortune by camera work. So back in the day, you know, exposure for camera shots, you know, you had to sit for like 45 minutes in the same pose, which is why lots of people aren't smiling and you had to be really still because if you moved at all, it was going to be blurry. So what the Stanleys invented was a shorter exposure time that basically took the exposures for pictures down from 15 minutes to 15 seconds, which is a lot easier to sit still for 15 seconds than 15 minutes. And they made this, they patented it, and then Kodak, the camera company, came to them and actually bought that plate off of them and the rights for it. And so that is how they made all their money. So it's just kind of interesting just for camera history, photography history, how that's how the Stanley brothers made all their money. Uh, this hotel was built after one of the brothers went to Colorado to recover from tuberculosis, I believe. Um, don't quote me on that though. I believe it was TB, but it could have been some other disease. Lots of people were sent to Colorado at the time to recover from tuberculosis though, because the air is so dry there. And as someone who's lived there, yeah, it's dry. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that was interesting knowing all the history of that hotel and then seeing it. It is a really fancy hotel. I mean, the Stanleys actually built the hotel as a guest house for all their rich friends. The richest man in the world at the time the hotel was built was John Jacob Astor. And he was one of their friends. He would come to the hotel. He would play pool with the Stanleys. So that's like how rich this man was. And he built this hotel above Estes Park, the town. It's beautiful. If you ever have a chance to go, I would totally suggest it and definitely take a tour of the Stanley Hotel. I mean, it is kind of creepy. They do tell a lot of ghost stories there. And it's not surprising with a hotel that old, there's obviously going to be lots of stories. I don't know if I believe all of them, <laughs> but it's definitely really interesting, super fun to see. And that kind of rolls us into the next thing as well, which is the Stephen King TV adaptation of The Shining, which The Shining was filmed, the TV adaptation was filmed at the Stanley Hotel. And... There's actually still changes in the hotel today from that filming. So for example, the big like open foyer area of the hotel that, you know, like when you first walk into the hotel, the big entryway area that used to all be painted white, which would make it seem really open and actually nice. Like I love lighter colored walls, really opens up a room. But <laughs> Stephen King thought that that was too kind of Basically what I said, open, it's nice, it makes it more airy, it's lighter, and he thought that didn't fit with the mood of The Shining. And so a lot of the walls, not like the whole wall, but a lot of the woodwork was repainted this really dark brown, like mahogany color to just dim the light in that room and bring a darker mood into it. And the hotel actually has a contract that says that if they have to keep it like that, you know, going into the future basically, <laughs> So they keep it exactly, at least paint job wise, how it looks in the Shining TV series. Which brings me to why I also am filming this right now and releasing it around Halloween time instead of in June when I actually read The Shining and watched the movie and went to the hotel is because I have been trying to watch The Shining TV series for a while. I admit I haven't been watching it recently because I kind of don't want to. So if I ever finish it, I will add like a part two to this and tell you everything that I think about that. It's an interesting adaptation. It's what Stephen King wanted it to be because he was directing it or at least helping to direct it. I don't know if he was the only director, 
but it's kind of the version of The Shining that he wanted as opposed to the Stanley Kubrick movie version of The Shining. The problem I think with Stephen King's adaptation is it's such a literal adaptation of the book that it's basically, at least it was to me, like listening to an audiobook version of it, but having to sit through an audiobook version with really bad actors. And not to say that the actors themselves are really bad. I don't know if I've seen any of them in anything else, so maybe they're good actors and actresses, but it just drags. Like, it is way too long. It's five hours long, I believe. You can find it for free on the Internet Archive, which if I remember, I'll link it down below if you want to try and watch it or you just get a muscle through it. Or maybe you like it. Like, I'm not detracting from people who like it. I just thought that it was so long. It was so not 100% boring. It didn't capture my attention that well because it was such a literal adaptation of the book. Like they're saying the exact same things the characters said in the book, like not a word changed. So it was almost like they were reading off note cards. That's what I felt like. And it's not bad, obviously, to make a really good adaptation of a book but you still have to make it cinematic enough that it'll catch the audience's attention enough to make them sit through the whole thing. Because I've watched other like TV made movies that are way longer than five hours and I've seen them all the way through because I really liked them and enjoyed them. This one is just way too slow and it's way too literal. It literal, <laughs> literal and now I'm saying literally, it seems to have almost every scene in the book and the movie which there is a reason, by the way, when they adapt books to film, that they decide to pick and choose which scenes to put in and which ones to take out. And that's because for a lot of books, not for all of them, you could adapt shorter books just fine, but for a lot of longer books, and The Shining is 400 something pages, I believe, if you take that and put every scene from the book into a movie, it makes a really boring, really long movie. So, but I was trying, the reason this is taking, the reason I didn't film this in June is because I was trying to finish the TV version of The Shining and it just wasn't gonna happen because I just couldn't force myself to sit through all of that. I'm still going to try to because I've heard the special effects once Jack starts going like really crazy and insane are actually pretty good and I've heard the makeup is really good in the movie. So I want to see that part but I also don't want to just fast forward to that part. Like I want the build up to that part to see if he kind of changes over time with the effects and the makeup, cause I'm not sure. But that's gonna be maybe sometime in the future if I really feel like it. <laughs> so I wouldn't suggest the TV adaptation unless you're a super diehard fan and can sit through five hours of that. Because if you've read the book, I don't really see any point in like watching the TV series, to be honest. It just didn't captivate me at all. Anyways, that was a really long review of The Shining, the all-encompassing Shining tour, sorry. And I, yeah, I would definitely suggest the book. I would definitely suggest the Stanley Kubrick movie, even though it's way different. So just be prepared for that, like to not be a very literal adaptation of the book. And I definitely suggest that you go check out the Stanley Hotel in Estes Park, Colorado, if you can. Uh, definitely take the daytime tour. I thought I learned a lot more history and there were still some ghost stories in it. And I actually preferred it to the nighttime tour, which was just kind of hokey ghost stories that it was more like he said, she said, and we don't know who this person was, but maybe, and there was a bump. Yeah, I, I didn't, I still enjoyed the nighttime tour. It's still interesting to hear stories. I really like stories, but I would suggest a daytime tour because you get all the history of the hotel as well as ghost stories. So it's basically, you get the best of both. And as for the TV adaptation, eh, like I said, if I finish watching it at some point in time, I'll definitely add a part two. And because this is so long, um, <laughs> I'm not gonna add a question at the end. This was The Shining, everything The Shining by Stephen King. Definitely check it out. Fantastic book. And yeah, The Shining.
by Stephen King. Thank you all for watching. If you guys like reviews of books, because I do books mostly, um, then subscribe down below. Also like and comment. What do you think about The Shining? Have you seen the movie? Have you read the book? Have you seen the adaptation? Have you been to the Stanley Hotel? And what did you think about all these things? Let me know in the comments down below. I try to respond to them. And yeah, give this video a like. Thank you guys so much and have a great day.